it'll turn into a circle again. Would you let me know? Because this thing's been turning off on me without my knowing. I've had to pay attention to it. Do what? I've had to pay attention to it. Wait a minute. It's all crooked now. for the first two chapters and like I said a few minutes ago I'm going to be lecturing on uh, Wednesdays on the book and we'll be talking at least for a couple of weeks we'll be talking about the uh, Bill of Rights on Mondays. Okay we're going to be talking about the two types of laws and we'll be, we'll be really really uh, centering on criminal law. There are um, you know, as it says, the foundations of criminal law. There's civil law, there's substan substantive criminal law, and then there is procedural criminal law. Now, civil law, that's going to be law that, uh, that's going to be associated with things like property, uh, real estate, uh, uh, business interests interests and such your uh, book here says it is laws regulating the relationships among individuals usually involving property contracts or business disputes when we are talking about substantive criminal law uh, this is the law that uh, actually defines the, uh, that the government can impose uh, on individuals and it defines the punishments and the, uh, the consequences, such as whether it's gonna be fines or whether it's going to be uh, uh, imprisonment. One of the things that I wanted to bring out is, well, let me ask you all, why do you think laws are important? Why do we, have, why do we need laws? To, to keep things from happening. To keep law and order, okay, or keep order, okay, what else? All right, so it'll help keep order among individuals. There has to be a stop point. There has to be a stop point. There has to be a point in most every situation that we as a society say that's, that's beyond the point where we find acceptable. That's why you have different degrees of battery, different degrees of murder, different. Have you all ever thought about what it would be like if we didn't have any laws? Mm -hmm. Chaos. The chaos. You know, it would result in something like, well, I like your car better than mine. I just want it, so if, you know, I'm going to take it. And there's nothing to stop me except to be bigger than me and more physically able to prevent it you know and so that's one of the things is it brings order like y'all said to our society and it gives us a starting place for respecting others and their property okay now uh, your book says that laws are major tools for preventing government officials from seizing too much power. Laws are major tools for preventing governments, government officials from seizing too much power. Where's the flaw in that? Government can make the laws. The government makes the laws. And you get, you know, 
I don't know what political persuasion you all are, and it matters not to me, but let's just take the House and the Senate. Nancy Pelosi has been there over 40 years. Mitch McConnell has been there probably just about as long. Now, they are the ones in charge of the House and the Senate. Nancy Pelosi decides what laws and what proposed bills are going to go to the, to the House for voting. If she says, we'll just sit on this a while, it's there. The same over that Senate. And so in that respect, there's officials now that are seizing power because what if what if Tom Cotton proposes a bill for term limits for for House of Representatives and Senators? And Mitch McConnell says, I don't think I like this. If Mitch McConnell never acts on it, it, it's dead. It can sit on his desk, I guess, practically forever. And nothing can be done. Well, I think that there might be that if something like over two thirds of the Senate votes to bring it to the floor, then it might be acted upon. But, you know, anybody want to research how often that's happened? And especially in a climate like ours right now, where everything is so polarized. I don't care if, I don't care if it said that uh, the government would give free ice cream to everybody. Now that, and that's pretty non-controversial. But if a Democrat proposed it, Immediately, the Republicans would say, no, we got to worry about uh, uh, somebody getting too much sugar. And if a Republican um, oppo you know, proposed it, then a Democrat would probably say, well, no, we can't support that because we need to have more study uh, into uh, 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 the benefits and the, and, not, uh, and, and the cons of it. So why don't we put it in committee for a long time? system was not meant to work like it's working right now. Well, there's also procedural criminal law. Law de defining the procedures that the criminal justice officials must follow in enforcement, adjudication, and corrections. So, procedural criminal law. Um, Good example is Miranda. Because uh, of the uh, case, the case is that the man did not know his rights and he was not informed of his rights. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was deprived of a lawyer and uh, he uh, uh, ended up being convicted. And they took it to the Supreme Court. And now, Whenever anybody is arrested, before they can uh, interrogate them, they have to tell them what their rights are. You have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. If you uh, cannot afford an attorney, an attorney will be provided for you. you know, these are, that's the one procedural criminal uh, laws. 